Okay, we're gonna be doing this all in one shot since my video editing software fell under the weight of its desire to get me to buy a um, new version of that video editing software. It, the version worked fine until it just decided not to work. Um, the only annoying thing about it was that it kept asking me to get a new version, uh, but I didn't need to get a new version, but I guess that's how they pay their bills. Um, but I don't have it budgeted to get a new one, so I'm gonna do this all in one shot. I'm gonna, but I uh, have the time and the energy to do a little, little exploration, little overview of the game Genesis for the folks at the game box. Um, so Genesis, you got your five powers here, the Egyptians, the Hittite, the Mitanni, the Assyrians, and the Babylonians, and they are all trying to expand and build monuments because that's how they get points, and you want points to win the game. Um, if you, you get points based on the economic worth of, you see the little dots there? That's the economic worth of Tarsus, it's three. So if you control Tarsus at the end of the game, you get three points. And then you also get points for um, building monuments. Here, Silly Lily, right there, has started construction of some monuments. It takes two action rounds to do that. You have to start it in one round and then in another. So you're gonna have generally four action rounds per turn, and then you go to a new turn. Um, basic sequence of play is you're going to be getting a new king. So kings, you have a little puddle of regalness here and you mix it up and you pick one out. Or you can go historical and there's a chart where you can just figure out, okay, this is the king you should have right now. And then your king passes away at the end of the turn and you get a new king. Uh, Sorry, the next turn. Then you do initiative. Initiative is determined by who has the best king, basically. Kings are very important in this game. Um, the game kind of feels to me, I, I mean, I haven't gotten far. I've only gotten to, I think it's the middle of her turn. Um, no, I think it's it's going to be Babylonia's turn, Pumpkin Eater. Um, so a lot of, like, the army movement, you're going to be just using one big, massive army most of the time because your king is your only leader and they give you a lot of benefits. Um, big benefit they give you is they let you move further and movement is important because you, you use your movement also to do uh, fighting as well. So um, when you're in the action phase right here you have to pay to, to pay to play and then you get a card and the cards are kind of they, they run the gamut. They, they're the sort of cards that you know if you get the right card it can be very useful um, it can also be um, inapplicable, not help you really at all, um, but maybe they'll help you later, or they can kind of direct your play. So Silly Lily here, for example, she started off, I just kind of dove into the game. I didn't, I didn't really, I don't think I played, I, I didn't think about it enough. Uh, anyway, she didn't, she started off just like putting a lot of peasants out because she's like, I just want to build a lot of monuments. But then she got this card that let her like take control of something that's four spaces away or put a peasant there right which if you have a peasant on a gray space and there's nothing else there then you have control over it. if you have a peasant or an army basically on a on a any other space that's not in your home area so a lot of times that's gray especially early on but eventually it could be another color so if silly lily wanted to take a chunk of the mitanni homeland she could do that um but you have to have someone there. So anyway, she has this card that lets one of her pioneers, uh, her peasants, migrate to a place. So she's now thinking she wants to try and like push down to here and then get close enough so that she can send some uh, peasants there. The problem is I think there might be an issue with she needs to have a trade route back. So it could just be messing up with her initial plan, which was just to build a lot of monuments. But I don't think building a lot of monuments is a lot of, is a very good initial plan. I think you should start building monuments, but you get so much for taking, taking other territory, namely money and then also slaves. And slaves are useful because you can use slaves to build monuments and you can use slaves to like improve the walls of your city and that sort of thing. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of, it, it, the game, the game is pretty easy to play, I think. I, I, I think it's pretty easy to get into, um, partially because you're just going to have these, these leaders moving and things kind of, uh, I don't know. 
I don't know enough yet to really comment on that. I should just talk about how you do it. Okay, so you have your action markers. Uh, when you use an action marker, you get one major action, which means you get to use some movement points and move around and attack things, basically, with one one major group. That's, a, that's another thing that kind of makes you want to focus on one major group of armies, though. You know, as your borders expand, you're going to maybe have to alternate who you activate. Um, but you still only have that one king. And then... You also get two minor actions, which is how you start to build monuments, and you can move like one unit, or you can improve your city walls. And then you also get a recruitment. The thing about recruitment is you can't recruit unless you control something outside of your home. You get you get you generate units naturally at, in your homeland at the start of the turn, but beyond that, you you know if you you know like silly Lily, if she wants to prosecute or she wants to keep attacking down here, she needs to then be able to generate the troops down there because she just has a lot of peasants in her homeland. She's got a few armies, but not enough to really do well. Um, combat, we'll talk about that, and then maybe a little bit about chariots. I don't have any chariots out yet, but I can give you the overview. Combat is done by rolling two dice. It's pretty simple. And then consulting some tables. And where are the tables? Oh yeah, here are the tables. Um, Okay, so combat, first you, it, you, you control, you roll two dice basically, okay, so the red one says it's the attacker, the other one's the defender, so that's the percentage of the other, um, the other group that you're going to take out, so you, you look at the percentage on this percentage loss chart, how many people they have, what percentage you rolled, because you're going to, so if it's four, that's going to be 40%. Um, but it's, it doesn't end there. Uh, whoever has a step advantage gets to change the numbers around. So basically how you get step advantage is via your king. If your king is better than their king, if there's two kings going, or if you have a king with some step advantage and they don't, some tactical ability and they don't have a king, then you get a step advantage. And then if you have more people than them. So here's the, the people chart. Um, so say if you're attacking a city and it's just got two, two strength points and you have ten people, then you get you naturally just get to change the numbers by five. So in this case, say this person's attacking this person, they could take this away down to zero, so you're not going to lose anything, and then they can use the rest to bump theirs up, um, and then you know get a larger percentage. So if if they have a step advantage of four uh, or a five, they get they get five shifts, they can take that away and then move this up to nine. So that's probably gonna be enough to, to take out a two city. I, I, in fact, I'm pretty positive it is. And then you get the city, you get a slave, you get some money from the city, and that's basically it. Um, the only unit type, so there's three, there's four unit types and then kings. Um, there's infantry and then there's peasants and they're slaves. Slaves are kind of like peasants, but they can't quite do as much, and you have to have someone there with them or else they run away. Um, chariots uh, have some disadvantages in that they can't deal with mountains or uh, fortified cities, really. Um, but they have some nice advantages once you get their tech level up. So one, they're, they're worth, each chariot unit's worth a multiple of its tech level. So if you have a chariot, uh, chariot tech of one, um, each unit is worth one. If it's two, each unit's worth two, each unit's worth three, if it's three. Um, and then beyond that, so they can be, you know, they can pack a lot of wall up. Uh, beyond that, if you have more chariots than they do, you get some more step advantages. Um, so... And that's basically it for the game. Oh, the yeah, I talked about the cards a little bit, didn't I? Yeah. All right, so that's that's Genesis. I'll probably check in with this game uh, again after I've played it a bit more and I have the time a bit more.